Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Brookings Harbor and all the fishing boats at sea. I'm Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. And And this this is the the Insider Insider Report. Report. So let your ears do the walking as we fill you in on what's going on in the Brookings Harbor area and beyond. beyond. Well, hello, 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 and welcome to this week's show that keeps you in the know. Hiya, cat. Happy Labor Day. Happy <laughs> Labor Day, Bruce. And how was your weekend? It was good. It was good. Didn't do much. How about, I understand you did a little spring and fall cleaning going on. Oh, there. yes. Yeah, we did our fall spring cleaning where we just opened everything up, you know, after uh, all the smoke finally cleared from the air. We finally were like, okay, let's air out the house. We arranged some furniture and and just uh, generally like clear away clutter and stuff. It just uh, feels good. It's the uh, start of the school year is getting close too. And Jason's getting ready to go back to school. And, and I hear that Junior is, uh, <laughs> he, he <isn't>. is not <laughs> excited to go back to school. He's not ready. I, yeah, that's why I, was, I told him. I told him like two weeks ago, you know, that it was time for school. I didn't want to bum him out too bad. And he was all like, oh, man, I got to go back to school. He goes, that's like prison, Papa. And I'm like, uh-huh. it ain't prison. And don't look at it like that. But oh, it was like, man. oh, my gosh. But, mm-hmm. yeah, tomorrow, you know, Tuesday is when we start it. So it'll mm-hmm. be all on. And he'll he'll change his mind once he gets there and sees all his friends and everything. But, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, right yeah, now yeah. it's all yeah. torture and everything like well, that. But, yeah, like you're back to, like, structure and, yeah. like, you know, not play all day. And, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, exactly. I feel where my feel where he's coming from. Or have, to come, <laughs> or have to go with Bapa and do all his stuff and everything I do, you know. So mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, that kind of saves him from that, too, you know. And mm-hmm. then I can get a whole bunch done, too. <laughs> it mm-hmm. works all the way around. I love school myself now. Oh, yeah, yeah. I bet. Yeah, <laughs> it's got its perks, I'm sure. <laughs> but, yeah, we didn't do much because it was relaxing just to let it smooth over. With, plus, no events going mm-hmm. on this weekend and everything, so I had a break, so I don't mind taking advantage of it, too. But, uh, yeah, you know, uh, Jimmy Buffett passed away. We were talking about that. And mm-hmm. I had a little Jimmy Buffett story that happened back when I was doing backstage security mm-hmm. at Nissan Pavilion in Virginia. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I met, I made it a point when I was working that job was to meet every star that came through. That's why I wanted to do backstage. So I got yeah. to meet like Dave Matthews, uh, you know, Gwen Stefani, Reba McIntyre, Tim mm-hmm. McGraw, everybody that was on that stage, I got to say hello to Sting even, you know, and he was quiet, didn't say nothing, but I got a hello out of him. <laughs> and sometimes I shook their hands. Sometimes I got to talk to him for a while, you know, like Blink-182. But when Jimmy Buffett showed up, we always had our security briefing before the show. And when he showed up, the boss looked at all of us and said, hey, listen, don't approach Mr. Buffett. Hmm. If he says hello to you or talks to you, that's fine. But don't approach him and say anything. I don't know what the reason, but he said he would tell the manager and he'd catch a check for it, you know, and and then we'd catch a check for it and everything. So it was like, okay, well, he's got his reasons for why he didn't want nobody to do it. But here I am going, my record is going to be broken. <laughs> what am I going to do about this? Yeah. Well, they happened to throw me on the back dock, which was kind of different that night. And then I found out why was because that's where all the production team was and everything. And that's where all his backup singers and musicians and everything mm-hmm. hung out, you know, because the stage was right there. So they mm-hmm. could go in. Mm-hmm. And so it ended up being a cool gig. But while I was out there, I'm sitting there going, man, how am I going to say hello to Mr. Buffett and get get my record, keep my record going. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden I saw they had a luncheon going for him on the other side of the trailers that is little, you know, had a canopy over there and everything and they had a luncheon going. And I watched him and I saw he was leaving. Well, the way he had to come back up on the stage was to come up these stairs. Okay. Right there by where I was at. Mm-hmm. So I watched underneath the trailer. I looked underneath the trailers and watched his feet walking all the way until he got all the way up close. <laughs> Literally stalking the dude, man. <laughs> but anyways, mm-hmm. I waited until he getting ready to go up the stairs. And I timed it to go right down the stairs the same time he's going up the stairs. I mean, the stairs were tight. So yeah, it was like yeah. mm-hmm. he, he had to say something to me, and he did. And he went, hello. And I go, hey, have a great show, Mr. Buffett. You know? And mm-hmm. he went, thank you. He turned around and walked away. I went down the stairs, and I did the woo. You know, the, mm-hmm. I got it. I, my record was intact. But that was the story with the Jimmy Buffett, man. He's like, yeah, I got to meet him there and everything. There but go. I watch his show and all that good stuff. I had perfect seats there in the back there uh, on mm-hmm. the back st- stage. But. That was my Jimmy Buffett, nice. you know, encounter. And it was funny <laughs> because I, my record stayed intact. I got to meet Peter Frant from all them people afterwards. Mm-hmm. And it was like really cool. But mm-hmm. I, it was like, what? I'm you know? technically still going strong. <laughs> yeah, still going strong. I kept my That's thing intact. So yeah, it was fun. Great. Funny. So yeah, <laughs> that was neat. I had a lot, I was a lot of fun on that job and everything like Absolutely, that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I got to meet all yeah. kinds of cool people. But Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was my big deal. And so, yeah, I hope everybody got out there. Uh, you know, the fires, yeah, like you said, the smoke going away and everything. So hopefully everything's getting taken care of. We had some rains and stuff like that going on. So hopefully all that is getting down and 
things started getting back to normal around here. I mm -hmm. noticed, yeah, we got, we'll talk during the show. We got a couple cancellations and stuff that going on and everything. So no bueno, but hopefully everything will get going and uh, the fires will go away soon. It, we can get things back to normal if you can call this normal. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so uh, before we get going here, though, with the show, because we've got a lot to talk about, we'd like to thank Trike City Dispensary, the Oregon South Coast Fisherman, otherwise known as the Castaways, Just the Jeweler, and Oregon Coast VIP Marketing for sponsoring the Insider Report. And if you'd like to sponsor our show or one of the other fine shows we have here at KCIW, you just got to go to kciw.org, and you will be on your merry way. Mm -hmm. And speaking of the info, like I said, it's... September, my issue's coming out, so I got us a brand new, fresh music page to go on. There so. we go. Yeah, Lots whole, of dates there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, so I started off this week. <laughs> yeah, you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, we got Banjo Steve and Tiger Lily. Wow. On Wednesdays at Latitude 42 from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Yep. And Cisco and Daltry are playing on the 13th and the 27th at the Checo Activity Center. Music there runs from 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And then on the 16th, they'll be at the Star of the Sea Catholic Church Picnic happening at 11 a.m. and music will run until 3 p.m. that hey, that's day. that's very cool, very mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Hey, and the Tony Land Band on the 10th, they're opening for Diane Kai, the Maui fundraiser at the Chetco Grange at 4 p.m. On the 16th, they'll be playing at Kuntai 6 to 8. And on the 24th, they'll be doing the Stage Light 70 Showcase at the Chetco Grange, 2.30 p.m. Yep. And Black GTO is playing on the 29th and the 30th of September. They're going to be at the Elk Valley Casino starting at 7.30. Yep. And the Disturbing the Peace will be going on there at, on the 23rd at Chetco Brewing at 6 p.m. And at the Elk Valley Casino, they've got some events going on at the Betty Green Center. On the 9th, it's Comedy for a Cause with comedian Kermit Appio. Benefit and auction for Coastal Health and Hospice, that's at 8 p.m. And then on the 16th, it'll be Alien Ant Farm with opening band Snickle Fritz at 7 p.m. And then over at their Warriors Bar and Grill, they've got music running at 7.30 p.m. On the 8th and 9th, it's Mike Powell. On the 15th and 16th, it's Jesse Mead. On the 22nd and 23rd, they'll have Steve Nelson. Again, on the 29th and 30th, they'll host Black GTO. Yes, indeedy. And then Ranch Party will be playing on the 8th and the 9th at Coon Tai, 6 p.m. And then on the 24th, you catch them at the Chetco Grange at the Stage Lights, a 70s showcase going on there, 2.30 p.m. That's when that whole thing goes on. I know they ain't playing at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. And then Chris Capitano is playing Fridays at Zola's on the Water. Music there runs from 5.30 to 8.30. On Sundays, he'll be at Tortuga Mexican Restaurant with green trees from 4 to 7. And then on Mondays, they're at Zola's on the Water from 6 to 9. Yep, and then we have Michael Powell playing on the 8th and the 9th. He'll be at Elk Valley Casino, 7.30. And on the 15th, he'll be at Checo Bruins, 6 to 8. And then the Mighty Steelheads are going to be playing on the 9th at Turtle Rock and Grass Music Fest at 12.15. And also on the 9th, they're playing at Porta Pines in Crescent City at 8. Yeah, they're double gigging that one. yeah. Yeah, and the Italian guys on the 15th, they'll be at Kuntai at 6 p.m., and on the 16th, there'll be a Tortuga Mexican restaurant at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. And then for Steve Nelson, he's playing on the 8th at Misty Mountain Brewing from 6 to 8. On the 21st at Schmidt's House of Jambalaya from 6 to 8. On the 22nd and 23rd, it's the Elk Valley Casino from 7.30 to 10.30. And then on the 29th, he'll be at the Brookings Elks Lodge running from 7 to 9 p.m. Yeah, and yeah. that's it for the music. So now we get into the meat yeah. and potatoes here. Turning over to events happening at the Checo Library in Brookings on Saturday, September 9th, they're going to have a free documentary screening. It's going to be American Experience, Henry Ford in the Forest Room. And this is a free documentary screening about the life of the iconic American inventor and entrepreneur. Documentary is going to start at 1 p.m. And then on Friday, September 15th, they've got a tea and haiku workshop. And that's going to be in the Forest Room at 2.30 you can relax with a cup of Japanese tea and learn the art of writing haiku poetry. And then Friday, September 22nd, they have their Fall Poetry Slam. It's going to be in the Forest Room again from 3.30 to 5 p.m. Sign-ups start at 3.30. The slam itself starts at 4. And all performers have a chance to win a door prize. And then on Saturday, September 23rd, they are having their second annual Fall Carnival. This is going to be in the library's rear parking lot from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And this year's carnival theme is Adventure Starts Here. Indulge in some snacks, play classic carnival games run by storybook characters, and you can win special prizes by signing up for a library card or just making sure your account is up to date. 
And if you have any questions about events or services from the Checkco Library, you can always follow them on Facebook for updates. You can check out their events calendar at checkcolibrary.org, or you can pay them a visit at 405 Alder Street in Brookings. I love this. Haiku poetry. I wrote a lot of haikus when I was uh, younger. Yes, I, I did it's so workshop. accessible. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. But my, mm-hmm. the one I always remember is the one from Rob Williams where he, red sand between my toes, summer vacation in outer space. That was a Martian haiku. <laughs> one of Rob Williams' famous ones. I like it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, hey, we got the Brookings Harbor Chamber of Commerce is presenting Nectar of Life Organic Coffee, Brookings Harbor Chamber of Commerce Meet and Greet Mixer. That's right. It's happening on Thursday, September 7th, 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. Location is at the Cosmic Grind Espresso and Eats at 16370 Lower Harbor Road in Brookings. Free samples and happy hour specials and goodie bags for new residents while supplies last. All right. And hey, now it's time for quotes from famous people with Cousin Bruce. Yeah. And hey, here are a few quotes from singer Pink. She was born on September 8th, 1979. When you have a dark side, nothing is ever as good as it seems. She says, there's always a backlash when you challenge people's convictions and their heroes. And she says, the willow is my favorite tree. I grew up near one. It's the most flexible tree in nature and nothing can break it. No wind, no elements. It can bend and withstand anything. And last but not least, she said, you can't move mountains by whispering at them. There you go. Good one. I hope you enjoyed this week's quotes from Pink. Yeah, with Cousin Bruce. Until next week, have a great one. All right. Yeah. And hey, it's coming up, the 5th Annual Turtle Rock and Grass Music Fest. This is happening on the 8th and 9th of September. Join them as they wind summer down with an epic beach party on the southern Oregon coast. It's going to feature the John Doe Boys, Mighty Steelheads, Spence Bros, A.A. Shania Twain Tribute, Cut It Like the Kings, Frankie Hernandez, The Shark Tones, The Green Trees, Fleetwood Back, and Rogue Strings. Bring your camp chair, some friends and family, and experience a fun adventure in beautiful Gold Beach. For tickets and two-day passes, you can go to www.turtlerockfestival2023. Yep, that's it right there. Everybody keeps asking me if they still got tickets. Like, well, Mm -hmm. you just got to find out right there or give them a call because, yeah, Mm -hmm. I'm sure they do. So there you go. Mm -hmm. Hey, and Elk Valley Casino and Coastal Hospice is presenting Comedy for a Cause featuring Kermit Appio. This is happening on the 9th, 7 p.m., Coastal Hospice is dedicated to providing quality, compassionate, holistic care to the patients and their family at home, supporting and honoring personal choices during illness and at the end of life. At Coastal Health Hospice, they take a holistic approach to care. In fact, they require that all their staff take a holistic approach to health care. They strive to be kind, empathetic, supportive, and understanding in order to achieve positive outcomes in every interaction as they grow and expand programs and services to meet the needs of the community. Silent auctions they got. This is this is a mind blower to me still. Mm-hmm. The silent auction items are including, include, it says, oh, who knows what else they got, but they got Rolling Stones guitar, the amazing Spider-Man photo, a Willie Mays photo, Arnold hmm. Palmer and Jack Nicholson master's flags. Here's one that really blows my mind. It's Michael Jordan's Bulls jersey, mm-hmm. a Muhammad Ali boxing glove, a Fairmount, now this is easy, a Fairmount getaway to Maui, that's cool, yeah, all-exclusive trip to Los Cabos, yeah, that's cool, but signed Raiders football helmets and a display case. And assigned LeBron James photos. And then they say, and more. Or and like, more. that's not enough. Okay. <laughs> there you, you go. Enticed? That's going to be a wild night there. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's the money's going to fly, I tell you. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're going to have an auction. You might as well do, do an auction. Right. Heck yeah. yeah. But I just love it. How you get a Michael Jordan Bulls jersey or Muhammad Ali boxing glove for granted? Good Allah. show, old sports. <laughs> Good there show. you go. Yeah. Whew. All right. And the Calvary Chapel, located at 29935 Harbor Way in Gold Beach, is currently presenting a first responders appreciation dinner. So police, EMS, fire, and sheriff crew are invited. And they say, give them an opportunity to serve you. This is going to be on the 9th of September, running from 5 to 7 p.m. They do ask that you RSVP. You can call 541-247-2242 to do so. Yeah, very cool. Something for the first responders. That's very nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah, because they've been busy lately. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and the Manly Art Center is presenting the Magdalena Heiberg's Art Exhibit Opening Reception. This is going to be happening on September 9th from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. at the Manly Art Center located at 433 Oak Street in Brookings, Oregon. 
The exhibit on display from September 5th through September 30th features the photography of Magdalena Heiberg. Born and raised in Leuven, Belgium, Magdalena and her four siblings grew up in an environment where nature and adventurous travel through Europe played a big role in their lives. Her father was an environmental activist, a nature guide, and an amateur photographer. Years later, these seeds sown in her childhood would start to blossom. According to Magdalena, looking back, I now realize how my father's love for nature and his camera seeped into my very being. Very true. The journey to becoming a photographer started at Daytona Beach Community College in Florida, where she took a black and white photography course. From that launching point, Magdalena became an active photographer whose work was featured in shows throughout Central Florida. And in following years, Magdalena spent many long summers traveling and photographing in southern France. But that's interesting. That's uh, very cool, man. This lady's been around yeah. and taking some pictures. Absolutely. I always love a good photography exhibit. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. And hey, there's a Diane Kai concert for Maui going on. Diane Kai was born on Maui and makes his home there. He's scheduled to play here in Brookings on Sunday, September 10th. Diane and Stage Lights want to help with resources for those displaced by the recent fires on Maui. So with that in mind, profits from this event will all go for that purpose. And this concert's going to happen at the Checo Grange. That's at 97895 Shopping Center Avenue in Harbor. Doors for the concert will open at 3.30 p.m. The concert starts at 4. Refreshments will be available for purchase. And the Tony Land Band will open for Diane. Tickets are $20. They're available at eventbrite.com, Wright's Custom Framing, and at the door. If you're unable to attend, you can also donate on stagelights.us at the event, or you can contact Kim Devine by calling 541-251-3952 for more options. And hey, now it's time for a bit of weird history with Bushwhacker Bruce. Right, good day, cat. Good day, mates. Bushwhacker Bruce here, and welcome to this week's bit of weird history for your knowledge pleasure. Did you know that chewing gum came to be by trying to create a new type of rubber? It's true, and here's the story. There's evidence that some northern Europeans were chewing birch bark tar 9,000 years ago, possibly for enjoyment as well as medicinal purposes, such as relieving toothaches. Well, in the Americas, the ancient Mayan people chewed a substance called chicle, derived from the sapodilla tree, as a way to quench thirst or fight hungry. Well, in the late 1840s, John Curtis developed the first commercial spruce tree gum by boiling resin, then cutting it into strips that were coated in cornstarch to prevent them from sticking together. But its flavor was so terrible, it wasn't a big success. But when the inventor in New York, Thomas Adams, got his hands on some chicle, through exiled Mexican President Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, Santa Ana wanted assistance developing a chicle into a substitute for rubber, and believed the riches he stood to earn would enable him to return to power in his homeland. Well, Adams began experiment with chicle, but when his work failed to yield the desired results, Santa Ana abandoned the project. Adams eventually realized that rather than trying to create a rubber alternative, he could use chicle to produce a better type of chewing gum. He formed a company that, by the late 1880s, was making gum sold across the country. Chicle, imported to the United States from Mexico and Central America, served as the main ingredients in chewing gum until most manufacturers replaced it with synthetic ingredients by the mid-1900s. So, I hope the old bushwhacker gave you all something to chew on. I hope you enjoyed this week's Bit of Weird History with yours truly, Bushwhacker Bruce. Till next time, keep it real. But always keep it weird. Oh my gosh. There we go. You just uh, jogged some nostalgia in my memory, like going like, oh, chicle, like that, like chiclets to gum. Chicklets, so I was like just sitting gum, here yep. on my laptop looking it up. I was like, oh my gosh. I just, I remember like getting like a box of that and just putting a whole box in my mouth. We all did that as kids. Yes, indeed. <laughs> like the kids that would chew an entire pack of zebra stripe gum. <laughs> yep. But now you know where chiclets came from. Yes, exactly. Chicle, they yeah, named yeah. it from the original. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yep. Jogging my memory there. Good on you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. The Del Norte and Tribal Lands Community Food Council is having a harvest festival. This is going to be at Crescent City Food Forest. That's at 883 West Washington Boulevard in Crescent City. It's going to be on the 10th of September from noon to 4. And they're going to have local food, local vendors, live music, a beer garden, arts and crafts, an obstacle course, kids activities, and more. Yeah, hey, and Fort Castle Brooks is presenting poetry reading with Billy Ruth Furucci. She'll be doing this on the 14th at 6.30 p.m. Billy Ruth is a poet, 
songwriter, silk artist, and Spanish teacher who lives in Brookings, Oregon. In 1985, she developed the Transformation Wheel and has facilitated original workshops in Maui, Moscow, Santa Cruz, Denver, Coeur d'Alene, and Brookings as Angelita Transformation Training. For info on this, you can contact Michael Spring at 541-450-1115. And like I said, everybody knows who Billy Ruth is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You've been around the arts and crafts around here and all that stuff. Yeah, right. she's, you know Billy Ruth. Well, speaking of the impact, we mentioned impact from the fires might affect events in yes. Del Norte County and Crescent City as well. And so we were talking last week about a visit from Paranormal Cirque 2 that was going to happen from September 15th through 18th at the Del Norte County Fairgrounds. So because of the impact from the fires, that event has been postponed indefinitely. So, But if you want an option to see that group, it looks like they are also doing performances right now in North Bend through September 11th. And if you want to get in on that, tickets are available at eventbrite.com. Yeah, there you go. So, mm-hmm. yeah, hopefully we'll get them back next year because that sounded really interesting, actually, bring yeah. to the community. That was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We were talking about it last week. It was like, hey, that's Freaky pretty cool. circus. Sounds cool. Yeah, boring. sounds great. <laughs> hey, and like I said, the Insider Events is winding down. June through September, we give you the love. And then after that, we got to take a break. But uh, we do have one more bodacious bazaar coming up this weekend, the night, from 10 to 5 down at the Port of Brookings Harbor. There's vendors, a beer garden and live music, and the whole Spence Brothers band is supposed to be down there this weekend, so yours truly will probably get up there and do a few songs with them just because it's our last chance for the open mic, man, Mm -hmm. until next year. So yeah, boom, boom, we got that one going on. And then two weeks after that, we've got our Doctoberfest going on at the Port of Brookings Harbor. That's a new one that me and Chrissy came up with this year. We did five events this year, and that's a newbie. Yeah, and that's going to be happening on the 23rd, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., and on the 24th, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., We're celebrating Oktoberfest with vendors, live music. We'll have four breweries on board, food, beer fest, games, cornhole, and a lot more. We're just still coming up with the stuff, but we got bands all getting lined up for it and everything. Yeah, it's been been a hot minute since we had an Oktoberfest here in town. Yeah, Yeah, we'll have that one going on. And then, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. and then we got the Joggy Memory one be happening the weekend after. And that should Mm -hmm. end things pretty much for the September. That'll take September over. Mm -hmm. Then the weather starts getting funky. Right. Then we have to look at some (laughs) indoor options. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Stage Light is presenting a Back to the 70s showcase. It's going to be at the Grange and Harbor on the 24th of September. So the doors open at 2 p.m. Show starts at 2.20 p.m. It's featuring Robert Richter, Tony Land, and Larry Fries, Greg Russell, Janessa Lee, Danny Zimmerman, Troy Alvarado, Rin Lennon, and drawings will be held for fun and nostalgic items. Drawing tickets are a buck each or six for five dollars, or you can do twelve for ten. There you go. Yep, another stage life production. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, speaking of it, the Monarch Goddards is presenting the Jog Your Memory Color Run. This is going to be at Azalea Park in Brookings on the 30th of September, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. This fundraiser event is designed to raise awareness to Alzheimer's and raise donations for the National Alzheimer's Association and help fund research in finding a cure. There will be vendors, live music, beer garden, food, and more. Registrations opens at 10 for the color run, and it starts at noon. For info, you can contact Sarah Dotson, 541-251-8010. And next Mm -hmm. week, we'll have an update on this because we're going to find out where the color run Starts and ends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, Kat yes. brought up there, a thing because she uh, wants Azalea to do Park it, but she goes, where's park? the start yeah, at, Bruce, yeah, and where's, where's it in? And I go, you know, <laughs> I was thinking the same thing yeah. when I wrote this, and I forgot to contact Sarah and ask her about right, that. Yeah. So, so, we'll get, so we reached out asking about the length of the run and the map and everything like that, so we'll we'll get some more details. We'll have more details yeah. next mm-hmm. week on that one, but we still got a little bit of time, so we're Absolutely. good. Absolutely. <laughs> right mm-hmm. And hey, Meals on Wheels is still looking for volunteers. In particular, they're in need of volunteer drivers, so they deliver about 75 hot meals daily to homebound residents who can't get to the Checo Activity Center for the daily meals that are served there. They have both a harbor route and a Brookings route. This is a perfect opportunity for anyone out here who wants to give back to the community and be a friendly face to deliver a hot meal and a little kindness to local homebound residents. Whether you're interested in doing this for a day, a week, or a month, all volunteers are welcome. They ask that you contact Debbie Lutz at 714-423-9797. Yep, there you go. I hope that's working. I saw it last time I saw Debbie. She was saying that was helping out with this little thing call out there. So that's a good, good thing. And I hope this one's helping too. The Brookings Harbor Boy Scouts of America scouting for new troop members. Boys and girls are invited to this. As I said before, we have 
Troop 32 is one of the oldest scout troops in town that we've had, long history in the community. And as of today, they've had 44 scouts attain this prestigious rank of Eagle Scout, which they started in, it produced its first Eagle Scout in 1947 and has done 44 scouts since, which is a very, very cool thing to attain, that's for sure. And uh, Troop 4032 is Brookings' first female scout troop, founded in 2019, following the transition from Boy Scouts of America to Scouts BSA, allowing girls to join and participate in scouting for the first time in history. Troop 32 and 4032 are now accepting new scouts as well as adults interested in volunteering. Scouts are able to join the troops from 5th grade to age 17. Adults are able to volunteer as long as they are over 21 years old, are able to pass a background check, and willing to spend about an hour and a half completing a youth protection training course. They meet at the scout hall from 7 to 8.30 p.m. every Monday night, except on holidays. You can meet the troops and learn more about what Scott can help you achieve. Scout Hall is located at 414 Isaiah Park Road in Brookings. Uh, for phone numbers here, you can contact Troop 32 Scoutmaster Mark Haglin at 541-661-2749 or Troop 4032 Scoutmaster Rebecca Wilson, 707-951-3647. And hopefully this is helping with that too because yeah. I don't want to see us losing our Boy Scouts and Girl Absolutely. Scouts. Absolutely. And hey, there are ongoing game nights happening at the Whimsical Griffin at 615 Checo Avenue. That's next to the Redwood Theater. They happen on Tuesdays and Fridays, running from 5 p.m. to about 9 p.m. Features games such as Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and & Dragons, and of course, a selection of board games. Yep, and then we've got the Brian Scott Gallery monthly artist. Brian Scott Gallery is proud to present Brian Gibbons. Brian began drawing with pencil and ink pen at an early age, inspired by comic book and fantasy artists of the day, Brian also creates underwater paintings of ocean floor and fauna, sea creatures, wood and mixed media pieces, depicting neighborhood scenes from an era gone by. Brian's work is displayed on an ongoing basis at the gallery. For more information about the galleries, you can visit brianscottgallery.com or call 541-412-8687. The gallery is open from Wednesday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. And mm -hmm. that's about it. I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We I better, think we, I think we got the fly and fickle finger. We got, yeah, we got the fly <laughs> and fickle of fate. You're that's the right. one who says that. What? Yeah, the fly and fickle of fear of fate from the, old, that's the old laugh-in quote, if anybody um, doesn't remember or, or they're wondering where they heard that from back in the day. But yeah, the old laugh-in, fly and fickle finger of fate. Mm -hmm. So it's time to close this week's show. Before we go, I'd like to give a shout out to our fearless producer, Brother Tom, for all his great work making us look and sound good on the radio. I want to thank you all for tuning in to this week's Insider Report. Please make sure to tune in on a daily basis to KCIW 100.7 FM and listen to all the other fine show podcasts that they have to offer. And you can catch all the fantastic show, including the Insider Report at KCIW.org. And while you're there, you can check out the live streaming as well. And before I go, I also got to say, remember to please shop local. And this week coming up also is the second Saturday Art Walk in Brookings, running from 3 to 6. Had a lot of participants down there in downtown Brookings in that. Mm -hmm. So had to get that out. <laughs> Till next week, this is Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. We're signing off. Keep it real and spread the love and the peace every chance you get. And hey, we'll, we'll see, see you out there. there. Bam! Bam. Music credits for the preceding show go to kciw.org slash credits.